Welcome back to Get Your Sax Together. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and on this week's video, I'm gonna teach you how to get a lovely, soft, velvety subtone on your sax. First of all, what do we mean when we say subtone? Well, it's a soft, velvety tone color that we can apply to the low range of the instrument, usually from about low E down to low B flat. Although, once you play with a kind of subtone embouchure, you can apply it across the whole instrument and get a lovely, soft, velvety sound across the whole range of the horn. But really, it's designed for the low end of the instrument. If you want some good examples of subtone, go and check out some of the older jazz players, such as Coleman Hawkins, Ben Webster, Lester Young, those kind of guys really wrote the book on subtone and invented the genre, especially combined with a really big, thick, whiffly vibrato. They defined that sound. But every sax player since then has also used subtone, so it's not just those guys. So it's definitely a valuable technique to get together. So, how do we do it? Okay. Quite simple, I'm gonna divide it into two categories. One is an embouchure category, and the other is the airflow, the way you blow. So dealing with embouchure first, number one, you take your jaw and you move it down and back, and with a slight forward head tilt if you need to, and try and make a double chin, so it looks a bit like this. Now it looks a bit stupid, but that is what your jaw has to do. You need to really work on the hinge of your jaw and get it going right down and back to get out of the way of the reed. Number two, your teeth and lips. Your top teeth need to be right on the edge of the mouthpiece, almost off the edge of the top of the mouthpiece, and your bottom lip has to have no pressure whatsoever on the reed. And because you've moved your jaw back, your bottom lip will also be quite far back towards the end of the reed. So it looks a bit like this. So you can see my teeth are almost off the end of the mouthpiece when I do my subtone. The third point concerning embouchure is to make sure you have a nice circular shape with your mouth and you're supporting the sound with these muscles at the side. You're pushing them in. That makes your top and bottom lip nice and soft and baggy and that's what we want. So imagine you're saying the word ho and that's the shape of your mouth. <laughs> Moving on to the second category now, which is the airflow, the airstream. And the first point is we need lots of diaphragm support. So really support the airstream from your diaphragm. We're not gonna be playing loud, but we need lots of air support to go with it from the diaphragm. Number two, we need a nice, slow, and warm airstream to get a subtone. Now, when I say warm, I mean if you blow in your hand, the air should be warm as if you're trying to steam up a window. That's why you need that nice circular shape and you need to open up your throat uh, with a yawning type shape to get that nice warm air. And it's gonna be a nice, slow, warm airstream to get the subtone. The third point regarding the airstream is we want to blow down into the reed, not up into the top of the mouthpiece. If we're trying to practice altissimo notes, we want a cold, fast airstream going right up to the top of the mouthpiece. This is the opposite. We need a slow, warm airstream which you're gonna direct down. Now, I know the air just goes into the mouthpiece and goes straight through. So this is more just like a mental tool that you can use. So try and blow down with a slow, warm airstream and lots of diaphragm support. An exercise that you wanna practice to get your subtone together is to play a note down the bottom, C, B, B flat, with a full tone, and then switch from full tone to subtone. So you're going ba, wa, and you should see your jaw moving back and forward as you get that subtone. <laughs> So here's a quick recap of what you're gonna do to get a nice subtone on sax. You're gonna move your jaw down and back. You're gonna put your top teeth right to the edge of the top of the mouthpiece. Your bottom lip is gonna have no pressure whatsoever on the reed. 
we're going to have a nice round mouth shape supported from the side like you're saying the word ho and we're going to have plenty of diaphragm air support we're going to produce a slow warm air stream and we're going to direct it down into the reed and when you do that you're going to get yourself a cracking subtone <laughs> That's all we've got time for this week. Hopefully, with a bit of practice, you'll get yourself a lovely, velvety, soft, fluffy subtone, and that'll really bring on your sax playing because that is a tone color that every saxophonist needs, especially if you're a tenor player, because it really sounds great on tenor. But don't worry, it sounds really good on alto soprano. The only one that you can't really subtone on is baritone so much. I mean, you can, but it's a little bit more difficult to subtone on baritone. If you're enjoying the content, you can really help me out by clicking subscribe. Click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new stuff, which is every Sunday at 7 a.m. UK time. That's London GMT Greenwich Mean Time. Also, you can go to my Instagram and leave me a comment down there below. I'll answer every comment that I get. So far I've answered every comment that I've seen on my YouTube channel. Once I get 20 million subscribers, maybe not, but that's a bit of a way off, let's be honest. So you can give something back to me, that'll really help me out. And also if you go down into the description, get your free PDF, which looks like that. How to play subtone on sax, boom. That's what you need. <laughs> it's a really simple process. Go down and get your PDF, and I'll look forward to bringing you more fantastic, saxtastic com. <laughs> My sign offs are so rubbish, aren't they? I look forward to bringing you more great stuff next week. See you later.